Right now we're going to be talking about one of my favorite plant families, the irises, and I'm joined by Marnie Abel, who's the Vice President of the Austin Iris Society. Welcome to Central Texas Gardener. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, the iris show and sale is coming up in September. This is a calendar event for a lot of gardeners here in Austin. People know that they can go to the sale and pick up cool and unusual varieties. When's it happening this year? Uh, our sale starts September 12th. It uh, is at Zilker Botanical Gardens. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2220 Barton Springs Road. Uh, it will begin at 9 o'clock and it goes until 4 o'clock. Okay. Well, this is one that, again, I'd, I really recommend people get there and get there early if they want to get some of the cool varieties of plants. Yes, they get picked over early and we even sell out sometimes. Yeah. So you want to get there early. Which I think you know, all that speaks to the popularity of the irises, especially the bearded iris here in Austin. They're a great plant for our area. Um, I always ask people when they have particular passions about plants, how they got started with irises. How did you get started with the irises? Well, uh, we moved here in 2000 mm -hmm. and uh, I joined the newcomers club. And one of the activities was to go to Zilker Botanical Gardens mm -hmm. for a, a, a program. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lady there talking about irises. Mm -hmm. She It was in April and she had brought some blooms from her garden. Mm -hmm. And I thought, those are the most beautiful flowers <laughs> I've ever seen. I've got to learn how to grow them. Yeah. So I joined the, the Iris Society, and, mm. uh, and here I am. The rest is history, <laughs> yes, as they yes, say. Yeah. Well, they are showy. Uh, they're big, showy flowers, uh, an amazing variety of color. And yes. we're going to be talking about both bearded and uh, uh, the Louisiana irises, yes. which are a personal favorite of mine. Uh, let's start off by talking about the Louis, uh, the excuse me, the Iris Society, though, just a little bit. Now, mm -hmm. uh, th this is the secret brotherhood of the Iris. Now, what, happen <laughs> what happens? What happens at the meetings? We call ourselves Irisarians. Irisarians. <laughs> what okay. we do is have a good time learning about irises. Right. Um, we uh, we get together at the botanical center and mm. we have a potluck supper mm -hmm. and then we have programs that are designed to increase our interest and appreciation of these beautiful flowers. All right. Well, you know, and, and one of the coolest things to me about gardening in this area is there's so many other enthusiasts. You, you, you know, and you, you can learn so much from your neighbors and your friends who attend these kinds of meetings. This is where the real expertise, I think, in the gardening community is in these garden clubs like yes. the Irish Society. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn, you can go to the meetings, and I assume you have monthly meetings. Yes, we meet the second Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, September through May. All right. Uh, we don't meet in December, but... Uh, A lot of things don't meet in December. Good oh, months yeah. to take off. <laughs> good months to take off, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, why are our iris so good for Central Texas? I mean, these are plants you see in the, in the cemeteries, blooming their hearts out. You know, yeah. they haven't been cared for in years. Yeah, well, they're very adaptable. Um, they've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. They were uh, dated back to the e ancient Egypt. Yeah. One of uh, the first garden flowers, I assume. Yeah, the pharaohs decorated their uh, uh, burial tombs with irises. Wow. So if they've been around that long, I, I think that they're pretty hardy. <laughs> and, and you uh, think if they survive the, in Egypt, they're pretty hardy. <laughs> <laughs> in Egypt, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Irises are a xeric plant. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in these days of sustainable gardening, and we're mm -hmm. trying to uh, reduce the amount of water we use. Absolutely. The tall bearded irises are a good plant to choose for that. Um, you give them some good deep soil to grow in, mm -hmm. and uh, they will they will just perform for you. All right. Now, where in the garden can people uh, plan to pl uh, put these plants? You know, I've, in my garden, I like just to tuck them into the walkways and things like that. You know, they, they, don't, they don't seem to be too fussy about the soil. They're not. They have to have some fairly deep soil to grow in. Uh, they don't do real well in shallow like soil. Like caliche or something caliche. like no, that. No, they yeah, like not loamy do well there. soil. Okay. Um, uh, but you can, uh, you can put them in raised beds. You can grow them in pots. Mm -hmm. They do great uh, on the deck or mm -hmm. uh, back porch in pots. The gr so deep soil is a good tip. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming full sun is the they preference. Like, they like a well-drained area in a sunny location. Mm -hmm. um, they can do all right in some uh, filtered light, but mm -hmm. they have to have about a half a day's sun. To bloom um, well, yeah. Yeah, they don't like deep shade. Mm -hmm. they, won't, they won't do real well for yeah. you. You know, one thing that we often hear, and I, 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 don't, I can't tell you how many times I've heard this on my radio show, I'll get a <laughs> phone call from somebody who, uh, and they'll say, you know, my irises stopped blooming. Why did my iris oh. stop blooming? That's well, a common thing, isn't it? 
Yeah, it can be it can be several reasons. Um, if they're in the shade is mm -hmm. one reason. Sometimes if you plant an iris rhizome, uh, the first year it won't bloom. Mm -hmm. uh, it needs a little time to get acclimated and established. Right. So don't give up if it doesn't bloom the first year. Right. Um, if they're too crowded, if they get uh, root bound and too crowded, they won't perform well. The and that's usually the, what I want to start asking questions. It usually seems to be the thing that uh, you know people say, oh yeah, I have lots of them. They're all crowded <laughs> around each other. Yeah, and th yeah. And they need the to diagnosis. be divided every two or three years. Right. Uh, and then, um, but and they uh, they multiply. They mm -hmm. they need a lot of space to, yeah. to grow. They so. kind of it's a good pass along plant, isn't it? Yes, irises are passed down from generation to generation. Um, mm -hmm. If you plant one iris rhizome this year, mm -hmm. uh, you'll have a good chance of having five or six of them next year mm -hmm. that you can dig up and share with your family and friends. Yeah. And uh, we have a, we, I'm going to let the folks know we have kind of an iris theme show today because later in the program they're going to learn how to divide the irises from Tricia. So okay. that's going to be, okay. we can save that for Tricia, but okay. the, it's a really, it is one of the wonderful things about the iris. Is, I, it, and it's real easy to do as well. So dividing, dividing. them, passing them along, mm -hmm. always a good thing. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the basic care of them. You say they're xeric, which means they don't need a, a whole lot of water. Right. But they do like an occasional shot of fertilizer in the spring, I think, before they bloom. Uh, yes. Uh, the tall bearded irises, uh, if you plant them in the fall and mm -hmm. add a little bone meal, mm -hmm. and then uh, again feed them in February. We mm -hmm. like to pl feed them in uh, Valentine's Day, right. good way to remember it. Mm -hmm. Give them a little like bit roses, of uh, yeah. superphosphate and that mm -hmm. uh, stimulates the bloom and makes it makes a prettier bloom. Yeah. Uh, and then after they bloom, cut the bloom stalks and then give them another light feeding of bone meal. Mm -hmm. Or you can use um, a formula of 6 10, 10. Mm -hmm. uh, Tall bearded irises don't like high nitrogen food. Mm -hmm. uh, nitrogen will uh, promote rot Mm. So you don't want to put nitrogen. Okay, so no 2100. Nitrogen <laughs> is the first number in the, the formulation, right. so if it's high, don't use it. Okay, very <laughs> good. And let's talk a little bit about varieties. Now, we don't need to go into the particulars because I think there are probably mm, 20,000 different name varieties out there. <laughs> But they're, they're a stunning array of different kinds of, oh, of bearded God. iris. Uh, you know, there are solid color forms. And we'll t talk about uh, some of the variation that you get. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, they're, they come in all, all forms of color mm -hmm. combinations. Um, there are the, uh, I don't know, the ones that have the, the colored edges. The yeah, ones the that little picketty, they the call them picketty pic edges, where you picata. just get a little hint of, uh, uh -huh. of the color uh -huh. along the edge. Uh -huh. Sometimes you get the, the what they call the standards, or the, the petals that come up are one color, and, and then the falls are... Yeah, those are bitones. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You have to come to our meeting to learn all these all these terms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but there, but it, it really is just a stunning uh, variety, and oh, the range yes. of colors is... It, it, uh, almost from white to black yes, uh, and yes. everything in between and then stunning deep purple colors and uh, solid golds and uh, you know in my garden I have one this year called Persian berry that I, I had oh that's an old standard yes and we, let me tell are. you that my, it is uh, it was a real eye catcher for a lot of the guests in my garden they it's love a, that plant. A real pinky mauvey beautiful beautiful yeah. great colors. great yeah. stuff and yeah. you'll, we, also Louisiana's, uh, we haven't had much chance to visit about those, but this is a plant that is likes kind of the mucky conditions in the yes. garden. Yes, Louisiana's like to live where it's wet and soggy. Mm -hmm. They'll grow by uh, streams and ponds mm -hmm. and in the, in the, uh, the where, <laughs> Louisiana swamps. Yeah. That's where most of the, new, the old cultivars came from, was right. the Louisiana swamps. So if folks have yeah. a wet spot in their if yard? If they have a wet spot, that's a great place to grow uh, yeah. Louisianas. Okay. They also do great in pots, too. Yeah. I, yeah, I have a special place in my heart for Louisianas and the bearded iris. And I really, again, want to encourage folks to get out to the show. It's going to be on September 5th, is that right? No, 12th. 12th, 12th. September 12th. Okay. Yeah. Nine, nine to, to four. Nine to four. At the Zilker Botanical Auditorium. Okay. Yeah. And uh, there's a telephone number if you need uh, more information or we'll, directions. We'll, we'll have that on the website. Thank you okay. so much, Marnie, for coming Thank on. You. And I uh, hope, again, you get lots of visitors. And I hope we have encouraged people to grow irises. Okay, great. <laughs> coming up next is Skip.